Let's review dual energy X-ray absorption densitometry and take a look at some of the fundamentals. DEXA scanners were primarily used and are still primarily used for measuring bone mineral density to document skeletal change. The major age-related change in the skeleton system is the loss of calcium in the bone. There are many factors that equate to calcium loss in the bone, but the major factor is the simple process of aging. It is often difficult to think of the bone as dynamic and rather think of it as being static, but we are constantly changing our skeleton and actually every 10 years we change out the entire skeletal system within our bodies through a process of creation of new bone and reabsorption of the old bone. As we slow down or get older, the process changes and eventually we end up having a lack of calcium in our bone. The lack of calcium makes the bone brittle and easy to fracture. Using DEXA scanning, we could quantify the changes in bone over a person's lifetime or when they have a peak event which affects the growth of the bone. Bone is living tissue. As we age, the structure of the bone changes and this results in a loss of bone tissue. Low bone mass means bones are weaker and places people at risk of breaks from a sudden bump or a fall. Because we get older again and bone is living tissue, we have a change in the tissue and if we fall or when we fall, we have a greater possibility of fracturing the skeletal system. Although DEXA can quantify the changes in tissue within the body, the primary applications of DEXA remain quantitative diagnosis of osteoporosis and the prediction of the risk of fracture. Another use for our DEXA is the analysis of body composition. In fact, DEXA is considered to be by some the gold standard having replaced underwater weighing for this purpose of measuring body composition. There are many applications for measuring body composition which range from sports medicine to monitoring patients' changes in lifestyle, diet, or metabolic processes. But we will process the information today mainly about bone mineral density, DEXA scanning. There are a number of factors that need to be taken into consideration when measuring the density of calcium in the bone. Measurements can be used to provide information on early gender and ethnic changes in the rate of bone deposit and determining the age when the skeletal growth ceases and also when the bone mass peaks at around age 30. DEXA scanning can be used from infants through the elderly. It depends on what your physician is looking for and what type of information they want to quantify and compare about bone mineral density or body tissue composition. When we measure the bone mineral density, we must take into consideration the variables such as the skeletal variables between men and women, different ethnicities and different ages, and also people with different types of disease processes. We scan patients using uh, a DEXA scanner to assess overall skeletal changes that often occur with age by measuring the bone mineral content and also the bone mineral density. These are the two major factors that go into quantifying the change in the skeleton. As a screening test for bone loss, which tends to happen as a person ages, the U.S. Preventative Services Task Force, as well as the National Osteoporosis Foundation, 
recommend that all women age 65 and older and all men over 70 have a DEXA bone mineral density scan at least once. This exam becomes a baseline and can be utilized to compare with further exams in the future. As a baseline exam, it may also indicate further medical procedures that are required or needed. The age discrepancy between men and women is based upon the bone loss in women associated with the diminishment of estrogen that occurs with menopause. So women tend to develop low bone mineral density sooner than men. With the current medical capabilities of the modern DEXA machines, the FDA has considered and approved an expansion of the types of examinations that can be performed. This includes approval for structural diagnosis in the spine and detection of abdominal aortic calcifications often associated with osteoporosis. Bone mineral density can be quantified in virtually every region of the skeleton, as well as in the skeleton as a whole. There are two different types of DEXA scanning devices. The first is a central DEXA device or a large machine that can measure bone density in the center of your skeleton, such as your hip and spine. We also have peripheral devices. The peripheral DEXA devices are smaller, portable machines that are used to measure bone density on the periphery of your skeleton, such as your wrist, heel, or finger. Exams vary by facility, but there are two basic main areas that are scanned, the hip and the spine. If your equipment is not able to scan the hip and spine because of its size, such as a peripheral machine, then we scan the forearm, hand, elbow, or heel. Bones become less dense as we age for several reasons. This can include the inactivity of the elder person. An inactivity or an inactive lifestyle causes bone wastage. As we grow older, our hormones change, whether we're a man or a woman. In women, menopause triggers the loss of minerals in bone tissue. In men, the loss of testosterone tends to lead to development of osteoporosis at a later date than the development of osteoporosis in women. With a DEXA scan, we measure the bone loss of calcium and other minerals within the body. A DEXA scan detects weak or brittle bones and helps to predict the odds of future fracture and sometimes to determine if someone should be taking medication such as a biophosphonate to slow the loss of bone. The question is, why aren't we just taking regular x-rays of the skeletal system to determine osteoporosis and other things related to the skeletal system? Well, believe it or not, there are two different things. X-rays are images. Bone mineral density and bone mineral calcification are a process of measuring the changes within the bone tissue itself. While a regular x-ray can show changes in bone density, osteopenia, after bone loss of about 40%, the DEXA scan can detect changes as small as 1%. This makes it much more sensitive and accurate. Remember, these are two different processes. One is an imaging process, and the other is a chemical analysis process. As we discussed, the two areas that we look at are the vertebra, or the skeletal spine, and also the hip. Why do we look at these areas? Well, they give us different types of information. For instance, one in three adults, age 50 and over, 
dies within 12 months of suffering a hip fracture. That is a medical fact. In fact, older adults have a five to eight time higher risk of dying within the first three months of a hip fracture when you compare these adults or elderly people with hip fractures to those of the same age without a hip fracture. The increased risk for death after a fracture remains increased for at least 10 years post fracture. The image of the hip shows us where hip fractures occur and the anatomy of the hip. Hips break sort of routinely in specific areas. The first area we'll look at is the intracapsular area. This area is comprised of the neck and the head of the femur, just above the greater and lesser trochanter. The next area would be the intertrochanteric area. Many fractures occur between the greater trochanter and the lesser trochanter and called intertrochanteric fractures. You'll take a note that when you do a DEXA scan of the hip, you center on the lesser trochanter. The lower portion of the hip fracture occurs in what are called the pertrochanteric and subtrochanteric area. Any fracture below that is considered a fracture of the femur and not the hip. Let's look at when to scan the hip. For females, it is a female that is older than 65 years on average. Or it could be a female who is menopausal or postmenopausal and under the age of 45 and under the age of 65 with other risk factors. These risk factors may include not taking estrogen or replacement hormone therapy or if you're over 5 feet 7 inches tall and less than 125 pounds. Obviously, because men and women are basically different, when to scan for a male is for a male older than 70 years of age and a male that has clinical conditions associated with bone loss. Other indications for having a DEXA scan are having a broken bone over the age of 50 years old or if you've lost more than an inch in height. You have unexplained back pain, don't we all? have personal or family history of a hip fracture, smoking, or osteoporosis. If you've experienced a fracture after only a mild trauma or x-ray evidence of vertebral fracture and other signs of osteoporosis showed up on another exam. Medical reasons for having DEXA scans. If you use medications that are known to cause bone loss, including corticosteroids, and that would be like prednisone or various anti-seizure medications such as Dilaudin and certain barbiturates or high-dose thyroid replacement drugs, you need to have a DEXA scan. You need to have a DEXA scan also if you have type 1 diabetes, liver disease, or a kidney disease. Sometimes you get a lab test and you'll find that you have a lot of collagen in your urine. And this is an indication of a high bone turnover, and therefore we should also get a DEXA scan. Also, if you have thyroid problems, a thyroid condition such as hyperthyroidism or a parathyroid condition such as hyperparathyroidism, these would give the indications that you should have a DEXA scan as well. In addition to the normal DEXA scan, the physician may order a related test, and this is for older patients, and it's a special low-dose x-ray of the spine called a lateral vertebral assessment, or LVA, and this is sometimes done at the same time as the DEXA. It's technically or typically recommended for seniors who've lost more than an inch of height, have unexplained back pain, 
or receive borderline readings on their DEXA scan. Which of the three people in this image would be qualified for a DEXA exam? Surprise, just the child. Both adults are over 300 pounds, even though some of the newer machines will accept a patient of 400 pounds, the 300 pound limit is usually the standard or upper limit for getting a DEXA exam. A DEXA scan is relatively easy to administer and uses low levels of radiation. We can do a whole body scan to see both bone densitometry and also body composition. If we do bone densitometry, we may focus on the fingers, forearm and wrist, hip, heel or vertebra to calculate the osteopenia and osteoporosis and possibility of fracture. 